Hi, uh, my name is Wu San Yang, and I'm from the uh, user nursing user engagement group. Um, and I'm going to talk about the debug uh, debugging, uh, very simplistic, you know, uh, introduction to the uh, debugging on Korean Edison. So, uh, uh, so why do we deb debug? Uh, why do you use the debuggers? The reason is that you know, once you start to change your code. And then uh, you will see that uh, your program does not generate the correct answers anymore. And you don't know why. You try to figure out where that the problem started. Or the program simply crashes, and uh, you don't know where. And the whole program just hangs. And uh, this kind of thing happens quite frequently. So you have to debug in one way or another. So maybe the, uh, the, the usual thing that people, are, people do is to put a print statement here and there in what you consider as a strategic location. That's what I did when I was a graduate student myself. And uh, I was using the parallel code at that time, and uh, you know, it was printing a lot of data. So then I have to <coughs> figure out that how to interpret, how to assess the whether the data is real, correct or not. I mean, this is a really tedious thing. And then if you see that, uh, the, but, uh, when, when, you, when you look at the, uh, when you are t tenacious and uh, to examine all this printed data and then figure out that the, uh, there's no, nothing wrong at that point, then you have to put a print statement in somewhere else and you have to do it again. But problem is you have to recompile the code and then, you know, this is really tedious and exhausting and uh, it, it really burns you out pretty quickly. So that's why we are using debuggers, and uh, um, there are many uh, really nice debugging tools. And generally, it doesn't uh, make you compile every time you try to examine a certain thing, you know, a different thing. You just compile once, and you don't do it. And then you can, the more important thing is that you can control the execution pace. You can make it stop, st uh, the program run, and then you can program to stop. And then at that point, you just examine the variables to see whether the, uh, the, the values are reasonable or something odd. And then you, know, you do things. And that also, because of this uh, tool, you can provide uh, many uh, features, like you can visualize the data of array. So you can visually examine whether the, da the data is reasonable or not. Or you can just some statistics. And uh, you, with it, you can quickly uh, relatively speaking, you can quickly identify where the code fails. So on Korean Edison, we have uh, several kinds of uh, debuggers. Uh, the, the most uh, traditional GUI-based tool uh, is called the DDT and the Total View. We have these. They are pretty uh, very useful, and uh, many people are using them. And then we use uh, some specialized debuggers uh, called the STAT and the ATP. They are, uh, they are not very popular, but uh, they are very handy. So you use this thing when your code hangs. And you, you need to know that where the code hangs here. So you can quickly use this thing to find out the problem area. And once you figure out the problem area, then you can use the DDT and the total view to, to the more in-depth debugging. So this is a very, very nice tool. Uh, these are very nice tools. And also, we have a Velgrind. This is a, a, actually a suite of debugging and the profiling tools. It's not, a, it's not just the debugging tools. But it is best known for its, uh, uh, this tool called the MemCheck. This is for the, strictly for memory debugging. You can detect the memory, de uh, memory memory issue, uh, you can detect the uh, memory leaks as, as well. So, and also we have an Intel tool called the Inspector, and uh, we can use, use it for detecting the uh, thread, uh, threading, like you know, if we use OpenMP, and if there's some race condition, you can detect, it can tell you where the race condition happens. And also it can be used for memory debugging as well. Also, there's some interesting um, the tool that tools that the Cray provided is called the comparative debugging. You know, you just uh, you, once you modify a certain code at a certain point, 
And then you see the results start to deviate from the previous one. You, you want to know where that the deviation starts. So you basically run two codes side by side. You know? So you do a comparative debugging and then see that the, where that the difference starts. So this is CCDB and LGDB. So today, I'm going to just cover the first part. Okay? So I'm not going to cover the other part. And uh, the other part, we have uh, some in-depth training on April 24th. So, uh, so uh, if you're interested in, you know, to learn how to use these tools, and uh, uh, just sign up and, uh, uh, for this training. So as I said, uh, DDT and TotalView are the GUI-based, the traditional parallel debuggers. And uh, uh, it can be used for C, C++, Fortran, MPI, OpenMP, PThreads. And the DDT, in addition, supports the Core Fortran, UPC as well. And now that these, uh, these vendors are looking into expanding their debugging uh, capability to Python here. So, uh, so, but uh, they are very early stage, and uh, the DDT say that uh, it is supporting the Python, but uh, on Korean as well, uh, on Edison, the, with, uh, it is not working well. So you know, we, we, have to, we have to wait and see. And uh, uh, for large job, or if you want to run on the KNL, you have to use the DDT. And the total view for smaller job, but uh, you know, they are very, uh, have a different kind of perspectives. So if you have a certain problem which cannot be solved with the DDT, you can use TotalView. Actually, uh, one user reported some very challenging debugging problem. He couldn't see the, uh, what, what, what went wrong with the DDT. So I use a TotalView, basically, to see the, where the problem is, and I can nail it down what the problem is. He was using the uh, uh, wrong dimension for certain array, so he was making a, the, he was corrupting the memory area, so he got a sec fault, but that was not detected with the DDT, but I could, uh, I can find that with, I could find it use the total view. So they, you can use uh, uh, one of the other. So how to use a DDT? So basically you have to use this minus G flag to create a debugging symbol so that uh, if you, in a debugger, you can say that uh, variable array, AA, then it knows what it means, right? So once you build executable that way, you start a uh, interactive job like that, and then you load uh, this module, uh, a linear forge. Uh, we, quite, last year we changed the, uh, the module name from a linear tools to a linear forge because as a, Zeng just said that we are using SPAC uh, for the pack, uh, package management. And uh, the looks like the uh, Alleged Forge is more standard name. So we adopted the Alinear Forge, but we are still supporting Alinear tools. But it's better to use uh, this name. And then you can start it, uh, the, the your executable with the DDT. And you set up the number of process, MPI ranks. And for it is the OpenMP, you just click it and the set the open MP threads, et cetera. So the, this is uh, the X-based tool. So, you know, uh, the, as uh, Steve mentioned that uh, because of latency, it's very slow. So if you click some button, you have to wait a very long time to see the, uh, the result. You know, this is very difficult. So there are two, two solutions here. One is to use the NX. The other one is what they call the a remote client. They provide a remote client for free of charge. You can download it from here, and get, and then you can set it up for Korean Edison using the the steps explained the, in that web page here. So if you open the DDT, you can see the source code. You can navigate the uh, within the source code using these buttons. You know you can uh, go ahead and you can uh, move one step, one line ahead. And you can stop execution, and you can create a. Uh, and also, this is a very nice thing. You know, you see that on this line, you are you are in this on this line. You see that this kind of line here. So what is what is, it is for is the the, the variation of the var values of this variable over MPI ranks. You can so by simply looking at it, you can t 
tell whether that, uh, that, that is a corrective behavior or not. So this kind of tool shows many, many bits of things that are helpful for you to detect something. Okay. And then here you can put uh, some uh, expressions and to get the value, to get the expected value. And uh, this is uh, the stack, you know, this saying that all, I'm, I'm using 16 MPI ranks here. So all 16 ranks are currently in this uh, routine set BC. So you know that which rank is, is where, right? And as I said, that you can use uh, these uh, control buttons to navigate through your program. And then as I said, that you can, you can uh, make the program run until, until the uh, breakpoint. You set a breakpoint like line 100, you set a breakpoint, then the program runs and then stops at the line 100, waiting for your input. And then at that point, you can display, you can evaluate values. Watch point is uh, where the program start, uh, you, you set a watch point for a certain variable, and then program runs and the stops when the, the value of the variable changes here. And the trace point is like, a, you just mark where, whether your program reached that point here. So do I have enough time here? And you can also uh, display uh, the variables in a different way, you know, right click on the variable or display. Let me, let me just, the, um, let me just do a, some certain demo, a quick demo here. So I started already here, um, the uh, interactive batch job here. So I'm going to load like that. And I, I start the DDT. Okay, so I set the number of ranks to 16, and that is a pure MPI, and then um, just start run. And it's checking the license, and then it is uh, the it, it is uh, trying to connect to the, all the uh, processes on the, on the, on the lang on, on this node here. It takes quite a bit. I just wanted to ask you a question before you keep on running. Um, there is an argument line. Right. So you, we can put all the arguments that we want as on the terminal. Right. You know, like uh, it's a, uh, yes. Yeah, you can put the arguments there. And also for the, uh, the affinity thing, affinity thing, I think that you can put it, you know, the affinity that Helen just mentioned, like you know, using the minus C value and uh, whatever that thing. You can also put it uh, in a, you know, different argument line there. But the, yeah, that is the way you usually put the uh, the, the arguments that that are needed for to run you, uh, your program. I don't know what is happening here. <laughs> Any other questions here? I I do not know. Uh, it's Corey. So I, I really wanted to show some demo, you know, to you guys. <laughs> for some reason, this is actually the first time for me to try to do some demo <laughs> with the debugging tool. <laughs> okay, let me try it again. <coughs> Okay, got it. Okay. Um, so you see that I have a 16 MPI ranks here. Let me just uh, make it a little smaller. Decrease. Uh, decrease. So it is uh, waiting for me near the beginning of the code. You know, it just it did the MPI in it. And then I can say, say, you know, it does a lot of funny thing. But you can say, you can make a, the breakpoint here, okay? So breakpoint is line 78, right? I can put some condition like, you know, if the iteration certain value is uh, greater than 100, then you can run the, uh, this, you can pass the breakpoints 99 times and the 100 uh, time, it stops there. So it will be very good when you are, yeah, it is in the do loop, yeah. Are you editing? 
got um, F95 directly, or uh, it's on a temporary directory? Uh, so yeah, you have to you have to build it. You have to compile the code here. Is there any new file here that you are editing? Is it the actual file of your code? So I mean, if you find a bug and you fix it here. Right, so you have to rebuild it, right? So I think that, that this one supports the, some sort of uh, the, uh, the code, revision, code versioning. Uh, probably supports the Git and uh, uh, the SVN. <laughs> but how to integrate, I'm, uh, probably you, can, you have to come back in April to see that. But I think that yes, you can, you can rebuild it after you change it here. And then, uh, so, so probably that's, that's what you have to do. I guess, yeah. But anyway, uh, I, I create a uh, the breakpoint, so I can just let it run until it hit here, so it reached the, this point. So I can examine this value. This is an array. You can see that the, this one is an array uh, of a certain thing here. So let's view the array. So it is saying that uh, the dimension of this array is about 2,460. So evaluate and visualize. So uh, you can see the, uh, the values of this variable for this rank, right? This must be rank zero here. So it shows some funny uh, shape here. So this is something that uh, you may uh, focus on when, if there's a problem with this, you know? This is not smooth, right? It's actually, it's not a bug. It's because I was for enforcing the boundary condition at the edge here. So this looks a little bit funny, but it is the correct one. You know, what I'm saying is that you can visually check whether that uh, the values are reasonable or not by looking at it. Or you can actually check the uh, statistics, you know, whether you see uh, uh, you know, certain odd value like NAN, not a number, N-A-N, or you know, certain value if you expect it to be a positive, positive numbers only, but if you see a negative number, then something happened here, right? So you can check this kind of thing very easily using these tools. Okay, come on. Here, so, so you show the maximum and minimum, there's no NAN value, so it looks okay. And then you can also, uh, for instance, this K value, you can uh, show these values for different ranks. They all have one. So if there's something wrong with uh, this value, on a certain rank, you can detect it quite easily. So this kind of thing, you can do it quite easily here. So, so that's all I have. And uh, uh, do you have any question? All right, thanks.